The ultimate goal of cellular respiration is to convert glucose molecules into a more usable energy molecule called ATP. The ATP molecule is made by phosphorylation of an adenosine molecule. Phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate molecule to an organic molecule. Adenosine becomes adenosine monophosphate, then adenosine diphosphate, and eventually adenosine triphosphate with the addition of the third phosphate group. The addition of each phosphate actually makes the molecule more unstable. It's this instability that makes it a great energy molecule. It's ready to break off the third phosphate and transfer that energy to another molecule. The hydrolysis of ATP to ADP is exergonic, meaning energy is released when the bond breaks. Many other reactions in the body are endergonic and require added energy to begin the reaction. So, ATP is coupled with these endergonic reactions to provide the activation energy to make the reactions occur spontaneously. For example, ATP is needed to make glucose and fructose bond to form sucrose. Another very important energy conversion in biology happens to also be an important concept in chemistry. Early chemists noticed certain reactions like the rusting of iron involved the addition of oxygen. They defined oxidation as the addition of oxygen and reduction as the separation of oxygen. However, as chemistry advanced, the definition has gained new insights without changing the names oxidation and reduction. The current definition reveals that oxygen is not always involved in oxidation and reduction, but loss of electrons is always connected to oxidation, and a gain of electrons is connected to reduction. Often, oxidation involves a loss of hydrogen and reduction, a gain of hydrogen. Oxidation also involves a loss of energy and reduction, a gain of energy. To remember these definitions, there are some helpful mnemonics you could use. You could use oil rig, Leo Gare, or Elmo to help you remember that oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. Pick one that works for you and stick it in your brain. Oxidation and reduction must always happen together, and sometimes the words are combined to redox. As one compound is oxidized, another is reduced. Nitrifying bacteria can oxidize nitrite ions into nitrate. In this process, the oxygen molecule is reduced. Redox reactions occur frequently in certain biological molecules, like nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD for short. NAD will be reduced by the addition of two electrons and a proton to form NADH. But the reverse reaction will also be frequently used, where NADH will release two electrons and a proton, which is the hydrogen ion, in the oxidation reaction. Because the reaction involves carrying and releasing a proton and electrons, molecules like NAD are often called hydrogen carriers or even taxicab molecules. Their job is to shuttle the electrons and proton from one reaction to another. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.